good evening and welcome to the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive. My name is Susan Oxtoby. I'd like to welcome you to the After Image Ulrika Ottinger series and specifically to the Mosa Lecture. Uh, this uh, whole project is co-presented with the Department of German at UC Berkeley. And it, this event represents the final event in a week-long residency of uh, Ulrika Ottinger, which has been extraordinary in so many dimensions. And I really want to thank her for carving out this um, time in her schedule. She is a, a terribly busy filmmaker and artist and uh, photographer. And it's been very exciting to have you here, to have you interacting with our audiences and to learn from you. And most of all, to see your, your films, which are so beautiful. Um, on behalf of the German department and BAMPFA, I do want to uh, thank the MOSA Foundation and the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for their support of this series. And also a very special thanks to Professor Denise Gokturk, who is the chair of the German department, uh, a department in which she teaches, and also uh, she is uh, involved with teaching film courses here at UC Berkeley. Uh, Denise will join Ulrika on stage and lead the presentation. I simply wanted to mention that this, you're, this is a great event because you'll be, the, they will be focusing on two films that we have yet to screen in this retrospective. Chimizo's Shadow, which is a 12-hour epic work um, structured in four, chap in four parts and made in 2016. That uh, film would be presented here at BAMPFA starting this Friday and continuing through April 7th. Uh, and then this Saturday night, March 16th, we will present Frico Lando, which was made in the early 80s and which is part of Ulrika's Berlin trilogy. And so we'll hear about that uh, this evening and you'll, we'll wanna, you'll wanna see the film uh, on Saturday night. I also just wanted to uh, once again express how important this uh, series has been for so many of us. I know many of the patrons are seeing your films for the first time, and others are revisiting these works in these beautiful digital restorations, which are remarkable. And as I mentioned the other evening, it's so important that you've, you've overseen the digitization of your films, and they will be uh, seen over the decades and, and years to come. I also think that we greatly appreciate that you have such mastery over all aspects of filmmaking from the research and writing to the direction of your films, but also to your wonderful cinematography, the way you approach sound in cinema, and how it all comes together into an extraordinary whole. So with that, I want to welcome our two guests, Denise Gokturk and Ulrika Ottinger, to the stage uh, for the Mosa Lecture. Um, so thank you very much, Susan, and uh, welcome uh, everyone um, uh, uh, to the Mosse Lecture. Um, so uh, this residency has been a real privilege, uh, viewing and discussing um, her films with Ulrike Ottinger here in this great theater over the past week. Um, and we've all been impressed by her amazing energy and generous sharing. Um, uh, we were able to route her to the West Coast from New York, uh, where she had screenings at MoMA, and an exhibition of her photographic work um, uh, at uh, Bridget Donahue uh, Gallery, um, which was recently praised um, uh, in a stylishly illustrated article published in The New Yorker. Um, and uh, so we are very, very pleased that you were able to, uh, to make this detour to the um, West Coast. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Susan Oxtoby uh, here at the Pacific Film Archive for all the energy that she has put into realizing this film series. Um, she enthusiastically embraced the idea of bringing Ulrike Ottinger uh, to Berkeley um, and has done a wonderful job organizing the entire series of events. Um, of course, also uh, a big thanks to the entire crew here at the PFA, uh, all the people who were involved behind the screens um, uh, in the booth and uh, 
um, in various other ways um, to uh, make this happen so smoothly. Um, I would also like to thank um, uh, Roger St uh, Strauch from the Mosse Foundation for the generous support that uh, it continues to enable uh, these Mosse lectures. He's actually uh, currently on his way to the airport um, and could therefore not join us tonight, but he did call to send uh, best regards and um, he said, I'm proud of what you're doing with the funding, so uh, we, we can um, raise a glass to him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is the third Mosse lecture hosted by the Department of German um, here at Berkeley with support from the Mosse Foundation. Um, and these lectures reflect the foundation's mission to promote cultural ex exchange and public engagement. Uh, they also enable us to, to bring some Berlin to Berkeley. Uh, the Mosse lectures were originally founded um, at um, uh, Humboldt University in Berlin in 1997. Um, uh, and um, uh, their goal was to commemorate the history of the Mosse family, their patronage of the arts, and their contributions to intellectual life through the Jewish-German publishing house run by uh, Rudolf Mosse, and uh, the newspaper Berliner Tageblatt. Um, so uh, it's a prominent public humanities event uh, at the Humboldt University in Berlin. Um, and we um, are able to bring uh, uh, some of it to, to Berkeley. Uh, and this year, um, we were actually able to reconfigure and expand the program into an artist residency. Um, uh, which Ulrike Ottinger's talk tonight will conclude. Um, uh, so this, this format uh, seems particularly fruitful and we hope to continue it. Um, and we are um, also grateful to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for their contribution in making this series um, happen. Um, so over the past days, the audience has greatly appreciated rediscovering um, Ottinger, who is no stranger to Berkeley, she has actually reconnected with many old friends here in Berkeley, um, but rediscovering her work um, uh, both as a pioneer of um, um, exuberant women's cinema in her uh, Berlin trilogy. Uh, we did see Ticket of No Return and Dorian Gray the third, or rather the middle film of that trilogy, Freak Orlando, will be showing this coming Saturday. Um, we, we have also seen her work as a, um, or we have also appreciated seeing um, her um, mesmerizing travel documentaries, which creatively combine ethnography and landscape photography with archival materials. Uh, creating this layered sense of time and place that uh, was so impressive in uh, the film Ex Ex Exile, Exile Shanghai. Um, uh, so since the 1970s, Ulrike has made 28, it's right, right, 28 films? Yeah, you think so. <laughs> okay, 28 films as uh, a director, writer, and cinematographer. Um, and she has recently uh, overseen or is still overseeing uh, the digital restoration of her older films. Um, uh, and we have been enjoying the fruits of that labor uh, here over the past days, seeing wonderfully crisp, um, uh, I don't want to say prints, no, images <laughs> on the big screen. Currently, she is completing um, a film on Paris in the 1960s. Um, a place in time that was very formative for her artistic journey. So um, rather than talking about the films uh, that were shown over the past days, um, uh, Ulrike decided that she would like to speak about um, the films yet to come in this series. 
Um, uh, so after her departure tomorrow, uh, the series continues. Um, uh, as well as um, uh, also about major exhibition projects that she has done in recent years. For example, floating food. You will remember that great scene of floating food in Dorian Gray. Uh, that is an early inspiration, maybe, <laughs> um, uh, or uh, staging of that theme. But Floating Food was a major exhibition at the House of World Cultures in Berlin in 2011, uh, which did reframe major themes uh, in her cinematic work, such as seafaring, spice trade, cities and markets, uh, all in a uh, very sensual uh, multi-screen installation. So tonight she will present an illustrated talk uh, dis discussing her approach to both the visual design of her films as well as uh, her research methods for uh, um, non-fiction projects such as Chamisso's Shadow, um, uh, a film uh, that is still going to be showing here, a 12-hour film. Um, very beautiful, uh, documenting her journey to the uh, remote reaches of the Bering Sea, tracing the path of past explorers such as Adalbert von Chamisso. Chamisso's shadow will be showing, uh, yeah, uh, I already said that, it will be showing here. So um, we will um, uh, thus gain some insight into her creative process um, uh, she also has some great slides from her workbooks. Uh, we, and um, a, a creative process that we might find um, is actually grounded in um, extensive research. Uh, so um, as we will see, she draws on a rich archive uh, in her documentary films, which enables her to look at the present through the lens of the past combining old and new, thus capturing changes as well as continuities. Hence, we titled tonight's lecture, Thinking in Pictures, to highlight the conversation between creative imagination and knowledge production between arts and academia. Following her presentation, um, Ulrike will have, um, uh, you know, will be in conversation. Um, um, she is a true world citizen and superb filmmaker who uh, blends documentary and performance in her own unique style. We are very happy that you've come to visit us in Berkeley. Ulrike, um, please give her a warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Denise and uh, Susan. So, uh, welcome and welcome again for this uh, slightly uh, different uh, program, what we have uh, tonight. So, uh, I was thinking it would be the best uh, to, because the other films, uh, mostly of you, uh, we are present at uh, some of the films we have already uh, discussed. So I was thinking it would be more interesting uh, to talk a little bit uh, about uh, Shamiso's shadow, uh, because then I'm no more present, and also about uh, Frick Orlando, the uh, second uh, in the Berlin uh, trilogy. Uh, I yesterday at until late in the night we discussed which parts of the film we should uh, show, and I have to say it was so difficult to uh, decide. <laughs> Even today, <laughs> I decided to change something uh, because uh, in a 12-hour movie and what is typical for the film, yeah, or what is, so it is practically not possible. So, but uh, you will see some uh, parts of Chamisso's shadow, some parts of uh, Frick Orlando, 
two completely different things. Frick Orlando was made in 81, and Chamizo's uh, Shadow. I started to film in um, 2014. And um, I have done um, a lot in Asia, so I always wanted to go up north. Uh, then I have done a lot in Mongolia, in China, <clears throat> in uh, Japan, and uh, so I was thinking it would be very interesting to go up north and to follow a little bit the culture, because although in the north a lot of Mongolians, the so-called Russian Eskimos, how they are calling themselves, are uh, uh, living. And uh, then to show what's going on, and even in North America, in Alaska, they uh, are living, the Inuit and the uh, Yupik. And uh, sometimes they are from one family, and uh, I was present in Providenia, a little town, shabby little town uh, in Chukotka, really up north, very near to the Bering Strait, where both continents are of close, uh, of, uh, close very close uh, uh, together. And they are from one family. But if you are going to an uh, ethnological museum like in Dahlem, uh, they have the American studies and uh, they have the Asian or uh, Russian studies and the families are together and they are visiting. Uh, I think this uh, it makes uh, uh, 15 years they were visiting each other. Uh, it was not always allowed, uh, allowed but they have done it uh, with their little uh, 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 boats made from uh, uh, a field. So it is unbelievable yeah, what's going on. And I was present uh, in Providenia in this uh, little town when uh, from uh, the uh, American, from the Alaskan coast, uh, with a tiny little boat, people arrived. Uh, to, um, uh, they had contact with some women, and in the tradition, the women were always coming uh, to get married uh, 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 from other uh, islands or from other coasts. So it was an old tradition. And I was present when a little boat arrived, and they bought uh, some wonderful wedding presents, and uh, the women uh, 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 boarded these little ships after three days, and they went back uh, to Kaiser. So this, uh, 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 I found this very, really amazing, yeah, to have these two big continents, though close together, and it is really one uh, uh, culture. So I worked a lot uh, about this uh, uh, in the film. And um, what I wanted to do, this is to give an, uh, an image, an idea of this uh, area, who has quite an interesting and not very well known uh, history. So uh, first, of course, uh, Bering uh, came. And he came with an unbelievable, interesting uh, young uh, scientist with Georg Wilhelm Steller. At that time, a lot of uh, uh, German uh, scientists worked uh, for the Russians. And uh, so there was the first Bering expedition and the second Bering uh, expedition. And what I have done, this is to uh, 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 take from his logbook and from his writing also, from Stella's writing, uh, some texts. And then, some time later, Captain Cook traveled 
also with a wonderful, very early ethnographer, um, a Swedish uh, uh, scientist gentleman, uh, and a lot of his text were uh, are in the um, uh, uh, logbooks uh, also uh, um, the description of the people there. And uh, then um, I have uh, um, uh, a little bit later again, uh, there is Adalbert von Chamisso, uh, a French uh, uh, poet and scientist. And what is so wonderful, he is a great poet and therefore with a great uh, uh, sensibility and therefore uh, he, all these uh, observations are written in a language. It, it, this is just beautiful, yeah. So there are, this is the third citation and then I'm doing this travel, yeah, again. So you have practically 300 years of um, uh, observations and texts from this area. And when the differences between the old and the new, yeah, you can uh, uh, only uh, see it if you compare this text and there are enormous changes, yeah, and uh, I really had, uh, 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 I looked very carefully at all these texts and I have chosen this so you can really see what is the difference. So when Bering arrived, people didn't know the tabak and uh, when uh, Captain Cook came, this was already something they would have given everything, yeah, and also for alcohol. And so there are really uh, uh, big, big uh, uh, changes. So um, then uh, uh, my text, of course, uh, is a text from uh, uh, today, my uh, observations. And I think this is, this is also the reason why the film has 12 hours, yeah, because it was so rich, I just needed this time. And then when you go somewhere, and you know, it was extremely difficult to go in these remote uh, areas. Not only it was remote, these are normal difficulties, yeah. But, uh, you know, the Russian border there, uh, you know, this is uh, some little uh, official uh, people, you know, they are using, uh, of course, their power to get some money, yeah. And it was very difficult <laughs> uh, to get in uh, to the country. Also, I had uh, all the visa and everything uh, what was required. But this was for these people of no uh, interest, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know. Uh, so, I were uh, uh, thinking we should just start with the first part, the beginning of the film, who is telling a little bit what I wanted to do uh, uh, with this uh, film. So let's just start with the uh, first part of Shamiso's Shadow. Uh, of course, this kind of travels and this kind of film uh, needs a lot of research before and um, a lot of um, 
work. So um, what I'm always doing before I'm making a film, this is to collecting a lot of materials, uh, visual materials and uh, text materials. And um, this uh, in the beginning is a big uh, chaotic uh, amount of materials. And then with the time, I'm taking out some uh, photos, some um, cutouts uh, of newspapers, all kinds of uh, materials and texts. And then, uh, of course, I'm starting to write. And I make uh, big working books where all the materials uh, are in. And um, I have brought um, uh, uh, here, I didn't bring the original books. They are really very big and, very, and really uh, heavy, yeah, because all this material is uh, really uh, inside, yeah, and uh, it uh, is not uh, electronically uh, collected, yeah. A lot of this material is also, you don't uh, get it electronically and uh, also photos of mine from uh, earlier uh, uh, travels and uh, researches and so on. So uh, I like uh, to show uh, some uh, of the uh, books. In this case, in Chamiso's Chateau, Sh uh, Schatten, Chamiso's Shadow, uh, I made three books, one for Alaska, one for Chukotka on, on the other side, and uh, one uh, for uh, uh, Kamchatka. And uh, so I just would like to show you a little bit of this uh, 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 preparation. Um, I was especially interested also in the masks and in the shamanistic uh, practice because I had for uh, my film Tiger, I had made in um, 1991 90, uh, northwest uh, of Mongolia, and I had filmed two shamistic um, uh, seances, and uh, there uh, and uh, a group of the reindeer nomads, the Evenk, uh, living on both sides on Russia and on the Mongolian side. Uh, I had visited in these remote areas, and uh, therefore it was interesting to compare uh, the um, masks and uh, uh, what they had done uh, with uh, the uh, even, and also, of course, uh, with uh, uh, Yupik uh, people who is uh, closer uh, to the uh, Mongolians. Uh, of course, the uh, Mongolians are offering uh, horses or sheep, and uh, the Russian Eskimo are offering uh, dogs, yeah, because they don't have the other animals, of course. So, but uh, we can uh, start uh, with the uh, masks. Uh, this is a, 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 a Tlingit uh, mask, but I would like to see the other one. It was before this one, who is um, uh, here. Here you can see a mask, and two, it's like a triptych, yeah. And um, I'm not sure, but I were asking myself if, you know, you can close it, yeah? And um, there, uh, the transformation process, yeah, is the most important uh, uh, between the human being, being and the animals. 
but also with uh, objects, yeah, then you can close it. And uh, I found that this kind of triptych was uh, very close uh, to uh, also to the uh, uh, there were coming uh, little Christian uh, um, uh, uh, inspiration yeah to do it in this way because normally it is done in another way you know to make the changements the transformation so we show the not the clinging mask another mask later it comes later um, uh, yeah, uh, this one here, yeah. Um, here you can see this is half a raven, yeah, and on uh, top is, um, uh, was is Seehund? Um, a, 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 a seal or a fog? Fog? Yeah. A, a seal, yeah, and then the human being. Uh, it is a shamanistic uh, mask. And uh, then here on uh, this mask, you can see the same. Uh, on the top, it is, a, I think it's a fog, uh, and uh, the human being is a shaman. So uh, this is always shown in this way. And I have seen on the Aleutic Islands one object I was really fascinated. It was not bigger than 20 uh, centimeters, and on the top uh, you had um, a face of a human, and then you had a raven, yeah? And if you turned it, there was on the top the raven, and then the human being, and if, you put it in the profile, you had again uh, a human being and a an raven, and if you turned it in the profile, again the same. You know, and this is, uh, I never have seen, I think it is such a fantastic art, yeah? I think you need several thousand years to come, you know, to condense it. Yeah, in this way, your ideas uh, about uh, your um, uh, Vorstellungswelt, your, uh, um, yeah, you know, your, yeah, your uh, cosmos and your uh, um, uh, ideas uh, about this. And so I got very fascinated by this, and I talked a lot with uh, people about this. Therefore, I have uh, uh, some others. Here, uh, you have, uh, it's called the uh, uh, Aleutic uh, Madonna. It is a, a pregnant uh, woman. It's a very secret uh, uh, object. And it was found in uh, Karluk. Uh, on uh, um, uh, uh, on in a, a village, so it is probably around 600, 700 years old. And in this area, we know it uh, from uh, uh, Bering, and later we are living a lot of people because uh, you know uh, they had so much food each uh, year. You know they had. Uh, uh, um, all the sea mammal hun hunters, you know, uh, they had the whales, they had uh, uh, the, uh, uh, sea lions, uh, they had everything what they needed. And then the five different kinds of lux uh, were coming, yeah, from June. Uh, streams of of salmon, yeah, uh, uh, from June until uh, September. And once I was there, and uh, the river was really you could have walked, yeah, over the salmon. It it was really unbelievable, yeah. So there was a very big uh, uh, population. And then when the Russian fur traders came in the 17th century, um, they made uh, slaves 
of the sea mammal hunters, and they were really becoming slaves. And uh, then uh, they tried to to get uh, 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 then some missionaries were coming, uh, Russian Orthodox missionaries, and they um, uh, uh, when they baptized the Aleutic people, they were becoming Russian subjects and could no more be slaves. So uh, the um, missionaries from uh, were. Um, House arrest, what is house arrest? The missionaries from the traders, the fur traders, uh, kept the missionaries in a, a kind of prison, yeah, uh, uh, so they were no more able, yeah, <laughs> to uh, baptize uh, the people, you know. And so you have today this absurd situation that uh, the indigenous people in Alaska on the Aleut Islands is Russian Orthodox, has services in Russian Orthodox. These are not the Russian Orthodox, the Russians who are the priests. These are the Aleuts. And, you know, it's because at that time it was a certain they had a certain protection, yeah, and so um, they were very grateful to the uh, Russian uh, missionaries. But then when you go on the other side, yeah, and the Asiatic side, the socialism had forbidden the religion, so you will no more find uh, any churches, only in one place where a lot of mining is, and the new uh, uh, Russians uh, are there, and they have a, a kind, you know, the, this is this, uh, um, they have an uh, alliance uh, uh, with uh, Putin, yeah, the new uh, Russian, uh, uh, um, uh, the new Russian, um, uh, 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 yeah, you know. So, it is a very uh, curious and uh, uh, interesting uh, 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 matter. So all this I worked before on this, and uh, they had from Russia brought a, a whole church yeah, uh, to uh, the Aleut Islands. Yeah. And the bishop uh, got lost on the travel, but the church arrived. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the Aleuts uh, uh, took over. So these are uh, all uh, very uh, fascinating uh, stories. And you find out uh, when, uh, when you are there. And uh, from the uh, Aleut uh, Islands, there's only six times a week uh, uh, six times in the year and only in the summer uh, is a ferry going from one island uh, to the next. And this is, uh, I took this ferry and I were filming there. But uh, the shortest part uh, was done in Alaska and then I went to this very remote uh, uh, parts in um, in uh, uh, Russia, in uh, Chukotka, really up north, yeah, around the uh, Bering Strait. So, yeah, uh, that's wonderful to, to have this insight into the process um, and, and this collection of material. And we, I think we have two more clips lined up from Shemiso's Shadow now, right? Uh, you want to frame those? Or? Yeah, no, yeah, I think okay. we, we mm -hmm. should do this, yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Another part of it. Okay, yeah. let's uh, yeah. just go straight so, to the clips. Yeah. Um. Now I have chosen another part about a city. It is the only city you were allowed to go from the states, from Alaska, to this uh, place. It is Providenia. And uh, Providenia. Uh, was uh, uh, built uh, because uh, there were uh, at the coast 
maybe uh, 50, uh, 60 little groups of sea mammal hunters. And uh, in socialistic time, uh, around the 40s, uh, they had to leave their hunting grounds where they could see the whales. Yeah, it was on the reefs or uh, always between uh, the uh, sea and the lagoon, yeah, where they could uh, 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 very well survive, who was very good for, for their needs. And these were groups between 50 and 120 uh, people. And then they were forced to leave uh, uh, these places. And they were ga uh, uh, gathered uh, together with the Chukchi, who are the uh, reindeer herders. Uh, uh, together and also with some Russians in uh, three bigger settlements. Yeah. And uh, they were becoming working brigades and this was an enormous uh, 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 change uh, for them. And mostly of them were they are really unhappy with the situation. And then came the next change in the 80s, when the Soviet uh, Union uh, broke uh, apart. Uh, then they didn't get uh, the uh, supplies and any wares anymore. So the elderly people uh, uh, were in charge uh, for the... Uh, um, uh, uh, subsistence uh, um, way of life and uh, the youngers had to learn it from them uh, again and this was a very hard thing to adjust both the first change and the next change uh, also. So um, there is a lot in the film about these different lives. And there is one, I, we, I cannot show it, but if you find the time to see the film, you will see a wonderful elderly lady who is talking the whole history uh, like, um, you know, with a very, in a very classical way, with wonderful gestures. As an, uh, um, in, uh, she's talking it like a fairy tale, yeah, or like a narration. And uh, she is closing the eyes and has a great concentration. And then she is talking with very simple words. Uh, who are really um, heartbreaking, yeah? The whole history of uh, uh, her uh, village. And uh, so there are several scenes in the film. They are not only talking about this, but they are also showing their subsistence um, uh, work they have to do to uh, provide things for the winter and uh, so on, yeah? But now we can maybe see. Yeah? Ready? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, so let's see. Any concluding work, words on Shemiso um, before we move on? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, there it is really visible, yeah, what's going on in these uh, places, yeah. But uh, I was also in some smaller uh, villages and people is desperate, yeah. And then I, uh, you will see a lot of children in the film, yeah. And uh, they are looking so lively and so um, uh, sympathetic. And then I were asking me, yeah, what are they doing? in their life, yeah? 
the boys are starting with 15 or 16 to drink and everything is over, yeah. And they don't have any chances to get any uh, education and uh, so I, I found it very uh, uh, hard. But also then, you know, when the sea hunters are going out and they have a whale or um, a seal, so uh, of course we uh, uh, were traveling for weeks uh, with them uh, on their little boats. It's only four meter uh, uh, boats and we were traveling on the ocean between the, the islands. And then if they are hunting, you know, you eat something immediately and uh, on a sandbank or somewhere. And then they are um, uh, cutting the meat in portions in um, who have a little bit the same uh, um, value. Can you see it? Yeah. Equal. Uh, uh, equal, yeah. And um, they put it together in the... Um, uh, uh, back in the seal, so the seal becomes uh, a whole thing again, yeah. And then they are going back to the village, and everything uh, is given uh, uh, to the families, yeah. And this is wonderful how they share, yeah. So uh, not everything is terrible, yeah, but. Uh, um, it is difficult to see what the future of this people uh, uh, will be. So we, I think uh, we now have some uh, images from uh, the slideshow, um, <laughs> which is not up. Um, so, uh, I had mentioned the floating food exhibition in Berlin at the Haus der Kulturen der Welt, um, uh, which was a kind of multi-screen installation that you did. Uh, and we, we brought some, um, we have some pictures to illustrate that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, here we go. So. I got a wonderful chance, I had carte blanche uh, to do something about water, the waterways and uh, this old uh, trading woods and so on. This is something who is, um, uh, is always appearing uh, in my films because with this waterways not only the wares and uh, the spices were traveling, also the people and with them the ideas, the religions, the philosophy, uh, the knowledge, uh, the, a lot of inventions and so on. So uh, I looked at my films again and I made out of all my films, documentaries, uh, short films, uh, also uh, um, uh, uh, fiction films also, I looked at them and I made new montage. Uh, so the theme of market, the theme of Theatrum Sacrum, uh, the theme of um, uh, of uh, food uh, also, uh, of course, uh, food uh, offerings. Uh, and uh, then um, I made, by example, um, uh, a travel in northern Mongolia on a river. I went with a, a, um, a ruder boat. A, a, rowing boat. A rowing boat. And uh, then uh, I got from the Ethnological Museum in Dahlem a boat, an old boat from this area, and I put it in front uh, of uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, travel on, on the river. So you had a long ride 
and um, I made a, a big installation out uh, uh, of all the ideas I had and uh, then uh, here you see this is a, a market uh, a scene in China where I had the camera for 10 minutes on a street. It was in 84 and you see um, only bicycles and some old um, 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 some old, uh, practically broken down uh, cars traveling to Chengdu. At that time, uh, there was only one small uh, street going there, and they brought on their bicycles, you know, whole bamboo forests, yeah, and uh, big uh, parks, and, uh, you know, the whole family were sitting on, uh, uh, on uh, big uh, mounds of vegetables. And then you don't need a statistic, yeah, you see what's going on. And um, so, uh, I brought all these different things together, and then I made an altar of, uh, I called it the guest book of all religions, yeah? And I put a lot of objects I had collected on it. You can see it here. And then on the left and on the right side, there was a dia show who showed how these objects are uh, uh, used or are appearing uh, in these different uh, countries and temples and churches and uh, uh, so on. And uh, in the, um, ah yeah, and we had to change always uh, offerings, yeah, because these were real offerings we uh, put. And I made all the, uh, uh, Turkish and Arabic uh, uh, um, um, uh, 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 stocks at the outskirts from uh, from Berlin, yeah, to buy all this kind of things. This was for myself a very interesting travel in uh, uh, to Berlin to get to know all this family businesses, yeah, uh, from uh, different people. And uh, then I had bought some um, maps. In older time, we had this kind of maps in school, yeah. And I prepared them. I put a lot of postcards. I'm collecting uh, postcards, and uh, my friends know it, so they are always sending me postcards. So I put all the postcards um, behind or before uh, this um, uh, maps, and uh, I opened it, and I have written inside all the different uh, important, not all, but some of uh, important uh, travels uh, who uh, uh, were made. And from the other side, you know, I op opened it like and sometimes like an, uh, uh, I don't know if you have this in the States, uh, we have it, an advanced calendar. And so you have the little doors you can open and behind, were postcards from this, and on the other side, you could uh, also uh, uh, um, read uh, the text. Yeah, who was uh, who were uh, the postcards who were sent uh, uh, to me? Uh, this was the uh, opening uh, uh, for it, and here is the whole. Um, drawing I made uh, uh, before. So uh, here for the, um, uh, for the um, uh, waterways, yeah, it was on the ceiling and you were lying on a kind of, um, how should I say, 
it is like you would be in the ocean and looking towards the uh, sky, yeah, on the waves. And uh, so you could, uh, and the, all the waterways were uh, uh, passing by. And then you see the birds. Uh, the birds are also traveling, yeah and from one continent to the other. So it was a whole idea to make, um, to visualize uh, all these different forms of uh, uh, travels, yeah. And in the entrance, uh, uh, do we have the uh, all the photos? You know, can you go back to the entrance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here uh, I made a, a kind of uh, a pool, yeah, with a bridge, and there the columns uh, uh, around the columns I put feathers, yeah, and then uh, here you have all the floating food, yeah, the, with the spices. And the smell was uh, fantastic, okay. yeah, also in the uh, exhibit. And uh, here was the uh, entrance uh, of uh, floating food. Um, I made this uh, design, you know, of the waves. And then uh, when you are cooking the red, you know, uh, this is uh, steam coming uh, up. And then the entrance for the whole exhibit was, um, I made a projection on um, a canvas and the canvas was cutted, you know, in uh, like uh, in, in strips. And uh, this is uh, a mise-en-scene of the colonial opera from Dorian Gray. So this was very interesting. The curtain opened. Yeah, the, uh, now I'm speaking about the projection. The projection of the film opened and uh, then you saw the ocean behind. And in this film, I had three different landscapes and I had put uh, an opera frame, a painted opera frame uh, before different landscapes. And I used the original landscapes as uh, opera scenes, yeah. And this was very interesting. The people were always waiting until the um, uh, curtain went uh, uh, opened, yeah, and then uh, they had to put somebody, the illusion was so perfect that they had to put somebody who said, uh, you can, it's no danger, you can go through, yeah. <laughs> it was very uh, uh, interesting, yeah. So, uh, uh, it was in a way very, uh, it has had a, a kind of playfulness that whole families with children were standing for hours and hours and hours in this exhibit and sitting around the pool and playing and looking and uh, it was, uh, I, I think it was very, different from other exhibits uh, they uh, had uh, there. And uh, uh, the people were staying really very long in the uh, exhibit, just uh, uh, wonderful to see it, yeah. Yes, it was very sensual. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, you know, that's another exhibit. We probably don't have time to go into that. That's the um, world uh, travel uh, logs, uh, which was yeah. exhibited in Maybe the Maybe short. I, I can uh, see some... Brief. <laughs> yeah. uh, some short thing. Um, with the film Shamiso's Shadow, uh, I made an exhibit at, um, uh, uh, at the State uh, Library. And for the State Library, you can see this uh, round. 
and I meet for extra films. Uh, and uh, one uh, in this four niche, uh, and uh, one uh, was uh, uh, doing the exhibit, the eight hour passing landscapes. And the other was uh, for two hours, animals, the reindeer herds, the whales, uh, the walrus, and so on. And the other one was a one hour only with objects, uh, close-ups of plants, of stones, of masks, of all kinds of uh, objects. And the fourth one uh, were the human being in the landscapes with the animals or with these uh, uh, objects. And uh, we made also uh, two volumes, two books together. And I, I had the great pleasure uh, to exhibit the Humboldt Diaries, who were just uh, coming to the State Library, and Chamisso's uh, um, uh, uh, Diaries, and a uh, lot of wonderful uh, objects uh, found. Great. Um, so I think um, the actually the the projection we just saw here. Wait a minute. Yeah, this one that you were talking about is probably also a good lead over to um, uh, to your earlier work, right? Because. Um, Ulrike would like to end with a couple clips from Freak Orlando, um, uh, which is a film that is still going to be shown here next Saturday, I think. Um, um, and uh, so, so this projection at the entrance of the exhibit also sort of suggests uh, linkages between the earlier uh, very theatrical work and the more recent documentary uh, work, um, since both are ultimately world theaters, you know, a presentation of world theaters. So um, maybe with that, we could move to uh, the clip from, oh, yeah, a couple clips from yeah. Freak Orlando. That's where I took. So we showed the first clip of Freak Orlando. Okay. So this was a short scene from the um, uh, Goya episode. The film is in five episodes, and uh, this uh, 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 there's a little part from the Goya episode. I was unbelievably fascinated since a very long time since my childhood from the disastrous de la guerra and of course also from the Capriccios, but uh, especially from the Disastros de la Guerra. And with this um, uh, uh, hospital beds, yeah, uh, I tried to do something to bring, to condense three things together. This is um, Inquisition, uh, the um, uh, deportation, trains and the forced uh, psychiatry and um, uh, the whole film is a film about the relation between uh, majorities and minorities and it is in a way uh, kind of like in the Baroque where you had the world theater so I worked a lot with this Baroque model yeah, to get things uh, uh, together. But I have chosen it because it is a typical scene how I like to tell things with images and the misuse of power uh, to, yeah, I, I think it is a form of condensation, yeah. We have a few 
few pictures from the workbook here too. Yeah. Um, uh, this was uh, uh, preparation. I pre uh, uh, have done a lot of photographs with the actors, so this distortion things. It doesn't mean that it is then in the film, but just to get prepared for all kinds of things I wanted to do. Uh, so I made a lot, these are only two examples, yeah, I made a lot of very different photos and tried things, how to get there and how to show it. And then uh, the other one is a typical collection, there you have a, a, a Goya, you have an uh, old um, um, an uh, old uh, 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 wooden cut, yeah, from the uh, Middle Age, and uh, then uh, here uh, you have the uh, Siamese twins and all kinds of uh, Wundergebot, uh, Wonder, Wundergebot, wie sagt man, Mittelalt, uh, Wonder, um, uh, Miracle birth. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, all this middle age uh, 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 things. And here again, you have uh, uh, Goya from the uh, Inquisition. And, uh, and I you think. You can see the correspondence with the figure we just saw on screen. Yeah. So I always. Uh, 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 these are my collections, and I always are showing my inspiration sources, yeah. And uh, I think it's interesting because uh, the film is not only talking about today, it's also talking about the past and trying uh, uh, to showing this different, uh, the, the same structure, with a different instrumentarium according to the time. Mm -hmm. And we can <laughs> to emphasize the playfulness. <laughs> this is a funny photo of when I was 2022 20, in Paris. I uh, and I was becoming after this time in Germany, at that time uh, in Germany, you know, uh, Germany was not famous for the films, you know, of, uh, after this long Nazi period. Uh, this, uh, yeah, film uh, was, <laughs> was not uh, very uh, elaborated at that time. And when I went to Paris, I were living there for eight years, uh, I got completely fascinated uh, with film. I was there working as an artist, as a painter and photographer, and so I had this poster of the Marx Brothers with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have one one last clip from uh, Freak Orlando, and we will close with that. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. I mean, then yeah. then there will be uh, opportunity for conversation. And of course, it ends on Delphine Seyrig, <laughs> who is also yeah. featured in a series yeah. uh, PFA currently. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I would like to see something. So you have, um, this was the fourth episode of Rico Lando, who is playing in a sideshow at the circus. And uh, here you have the banquet uh, of the circus artists, and in the Goya episode, you have the banquet of the persecuted uh, scientists and uh, uh, artists. And uh, this was, um, you know, uh, they, are, uh, 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 they are interesting to see all the episodes together because uh, they are really uh, referring uh, uh, to each other. 
So um, we're already pretty late, I think. Um, yeah. um, I mean, I have, uh, you know, uh, questions or, you know, I, I would like to hear you talk more about the nexus between documentary and theatrical work. But I also feel we should probably give the audience a chance. Uh, so at this point, um, uh, let's uh, collect some questions from the audience. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please wait until the microphone comes your way. Uh, I think we have a first one here already. Um, so um, let's uh, hear some questions and open it up. I'm immensely pleased at uh, seeing your work Missing there, and I never heard of it before. And I've been coming to the Pacific Film Archive for many, many years, and for about the last ten or fifteen years to Berlin and beyond. So I have to sort of jump a little farther out and say, um, has Angela Merkel um, seen and enjoyed your work? Do German, <laughs> do German television, uh, mainstream? audiences get exposed to this wonderful documentary work. I think it should be the case, but what's going on there? Uh, you told me in conversation, well, the Goethe Institute likes to, in, uh, that which puts on Berlin and beyond, likes to in, uh, invite the younger filmmakers. And my response to you was the title of a famous humor book here in this country called, You're Not Old Unless You're a Cheese. But in any case, what about Angela Merkel and the other leaders of society? Have they recognized what a treasure you are? <laughs> should, we, should we collect a few more, maybe? Uh, uh, here is one. <laughs> we'll come back to it. <laughs> uh, just a, a brief comment. I was fascinated with your camiso pictures of the Bering Straits and the specific details of landscapes, the time you take to film this. It reminds me of the opposite. I have a cousin who's a Lufthansa pilot, and I asked him to give me a map, of a Lufthansa map, used by pilots of North America and Europe. And in that map, of course, just lines of how these planes fly. The continents disappear. Just vague outlines, you can see Greenland or Iceland, and, but the specificity of, of our globe is disappearing. The more and more we get interconnected by, you know, by all our modern means of communication. It's almost, a, what you're doing is almost a rebellion by mm -hmm. preserving things that must be reserved if we stay, want to stay human. Um, my question has to do uh, with your older works. I was able to see Ticket of No Return and Dorian Gray last week, and um, you talked about having a hand in restoring them and um, transferring them to digital, and I was wondering what sort of thoughts and emotions um, are summoned when you watch your older work. I mean, maybe we can pick up on that question again and also um, you know, of course, it has to be said that uh, that that a lot of those older films were also only possible as television co-productions. So, so that I mean, there there would be no new German cinema without television. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but it it is also really wonderful to see them again in this restore in these restored versions. Uh, um, and and you know on the big screen and revisit those films, right? But the question was to you. <laughs> no, you know my films are really around. I uh, also in in Germany, but uh, retrospects uh, retrospectives all over the world. Yeah, and uh, you know this is interesting. There's always. Um, the re reception of uh, films is always different in different times, in different countries. And um, 
so uh, uh, you know but I remember even my first film Madam X an absolute ruler a crazy pirate uh, movie I made in 77 who was a kind of very funny comedy also uh, in the uh, women's movement yeah where a lot of different women um, uh, um, going on a pirate ship, yeah, and uh, uh, leaving uh, their boring daily life behind, yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, this was shown at that time in television when we had only two programs, and the um, whole, you know, half of Germany had seen it. And at that time it was a big scandal, yeah, but everybody was very happy yeah, to uh, uh, have it also at television because at that time the uh, redactors were younger and uh, very risky yeah, and wanted to do something different yeah, after this stupid uh, uh, period. Yeah. So, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> it was another time, yeah. But and then it went on. Sometimes it's difficult to get out with a film and he gets successful only 10 years later, yeah. And sometimes it's before. It's very interesting, the reception of films, yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, you see something, I, I think it becomes more and more important to look carefully at things and at all the details, yeah. And as older I get, um, as, uh, uh, so more I try, I try at least to do this, yeah. More questions? Hi, two things. Um, first of all, thank you so much for showing your workbooks. I really appreciate that because one only one usually only sees a, sees a finished product, whether it's a poem or a painting or a film or a piece of sculpture, and it's just as interesting to see the thought and the dreaminess and the reflection that goes into the final piece. And so thank you very much. That I, found them, I found it fascinating, and I wish you could talk more about that, but we don't have time. Um, and the second thing is I'm really amazed that you, your stuff was on television in the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> Because one of the things... Later also. <laughs> you too? But um, it, it couldn't have happened in this country. Uh -huh. It could not have happened in this country because of our Puritan conservative ethos that has still an ugly face. I'll say no more than that. But um, because I've seen a couple of your films now, and what I really appreciated was you showing all parts of all different parts of culture, of society, all different representatives of all the subcultures and that go into, that really do go into a whole culture, whether they're made invisible by the larger culture out of prejudice or fear or control. And I really appreciated in, um, I guess it was Dorian Gray, seeing people who I might have known or might have been and who are normally vilified, demonized, or treated as pornography in, I will say, in this culture still. Um, and to think that, that your films were on television is astonishing to me, <laughs> and in a good way astonishing. So thank you, German TV. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That you're currently making on Paris. Is it a documentary? Is it a hybrid? Is it a fiction film? <laughs> it's a 
the new one on <laughs> Paris. Pa pa the new one on Paris is a. Is it a documentary? Is it a hybrid? Is it? <laughs> oh, you know. I were living the whole sixties in Paris, and there were. It was for me a kind of eye opener, and was I was interested in practically everything. Yeah. And um, so I got to know cinema. Uh, I got to know all these great ethnographers who were at the same time poets. Uh, Lyris and, uh, uh, of course, um, um, uh, Claude uh, Levi Strauss, not your Levi Blue Jean Strauss, <laughs> but uh, also great personality. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I got to know uh, all this and I worked as a, a painter and um, I was very interested in, in books also. And there were all these fantastic galleries and libraries and so this was unbelievable yeah at that time living at that time in Paris so I tried to do something um, what was quite difficult to do yeah to um, taking the position of a younger artist I was at that time time, yeah, and I remembering it from the position of an elder artist I'm now. And this was something extremely difficult, yeah, uh, uh, to do. And uh, so it took me a long time to uh, do this film, but now the film is uh, practically uh, finished. It will be a kind of essay film, I, I would say, yeah. It's interesting that you you told me the other day that um, you know we we tend to think that your move to documentary was programmatic, that you moved away from drama and fiction more to documentary, but that also had uh, funding reasons, you know. So that that you are still very interested in making feature, uh, you know, dramatic films. Yeah, I have a lot of screenplays really ready to uh, shoot, but they are too expensive, yeah. Mm. And it's very difficult to get the big money together if you are not working within the system. System means in Germany that uh, you get money from the, uh, uh, from the region, yeah and then you have to work there. But if I like to do a film in New York, you don't get the money from them, yeah? But then you would have to do it in the studios. This is something, partly I wanted to do it, but uh, I like to do mise-en-scene in existing places, yeah? But I find fascinating, yeah? Because, um, uh, the place itself becomes part of the film and reflects a certain time, a certain theme, and so on. And for me, I'm always looking for locations and places who are telling uh, stories themselves. And there, to do mise-en-scene, this is what I'm interested in. And, uh, you know, in Germany, then, uh, you know, we have all these films, they look all the same, yeah. Uh, you have to go from Baden-Württemberg to Hessen uh, to uh, Brandenburg, yeah, uh, to do films there and there and there. And it is completely ridiculous, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, the, it's, it's complicated and... Uh, 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 artistically, it is a catastrophe. <laughs> Coming. Joan of Arc of Mongolia is my favorite film. <laughs> it has such 
beautiful beginning and a beautiful end. I was paying attention and was hoping for the Red Baroness, the vampire movie with Isabelle Hubert and Tilda Swinton. What happened? I found out that Tilda Swinton did a different vampire movie. <laughs> <laughs> We never get the money together, yeah. I had, uh, you know, I had all the film Diamond Dance I wanted to do in New York in the different uh, neighborhoods. I had Angelica Houston, I had F. Murray Abram, I had Diane Wiest, I had, you know, all the big stars and I couldn't do it, yeah from the States were not coming enough money and from Germany not at all. So I could not do it and after 10 years uh, I had to give up. Yeah. So, But maybe one day I'm doing it. <laughs> I would love to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's Probably time to wrap up, yes. <laughs> Susan is nodding. <laughs> so um, thank you all very much. Uh, thanks to the students who stayed until the end. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for coming and thanks to all. <laughs>